Hi everyone, my name is Adam. I'm in high school and I love it, but I hate doing my homework. It's just terrible. I don't understand who came up with it and why. I already remember everything I learned at school, so why repeat it at home? And I also feel like time at home is just for relaxing and playing around. This would be fair. And yeah, my parents make me do my homework and the teachers always complain that I do it badly. Because of this, we always argue, but I'm already used to it and my good grades for participation make up for the bad grades for homework. So in general, I do pretty well at school, but then an emergency happened and we were all transferred to do online learning. And now the homework is all the work I have. That's my worst nightmare. At first, I tried to dodge distance learning. I turned off my Wi-Fi router, broke my speakers, and even downloaded a virus to my computer. But my parents quickly fixed everything. Then I got sick. Rather, I pretended that I was sick, but they invited my grandma to stay with us and look after me and my sickness break turned into a nightmare. They took away my phone, wrapped me in hundreds of blankets, fed me hot soups and gave me healthy teas. Then I decided to get better quickly and literally a day later, I was healthy again. My parents started to insist that I study again, but I didn't want to so badly. It's so nice to be at home. You can lie on the couch all day, eat chips and do whatever you want. But classes are not a part of this extremely relaxed schedule. After a while, my teacher called and said that I was not handing in any work at all. And I realized that I was in big trouble. My father was angry and took my smartphone away and my computer and blocked everything except school apps. It was unbearably boring at home but I did not want to study. Mom promised that after I do the assignments, they will return my phone. There was no way out. I had to study. The next day I was preparing or rather avoiding to do the homework for a long time. Got into the school group chat and found out that my classmates were also being limited by their parents. One was suffering because he wasn't allowed chocolate. Someone was forbidden to eat chips and someone was left without ice cream. I was not limited in all this and there was a cupboard full of sweets and a whole fridge filled with ice cream at home. Wait, what if I did some exchange? It was a great idea. I messaged each of them separately and offered an exchange. I would give them sweets and they would do homework for me. And they all agreed. Every day I had a two hour walk during which I quietly carried sweets to my friends. Every day I received emails with homework, sent a copy to teachers, and gave another one to my parents and finally got my phone back. My grades were getting much better. My parents were delighted. Everything was going just fine. One happy morning, I opened the school website and saw that my access was blocked. What? Why can't I log in? I called my teacher and said that I was expelled from school for cheating. Where did I mess up? Maybe someone told on me. Last time, Michael wanted chocolate ice cream and I brought him strawberry kind. So maybe he got offended and told about. I tried to figure out who could do that. But everyone who I'd asked said that they did not talk about our business. In the evening, my parents received a letter from school. It said that if I didn't submit all the work in the next week, I would be officially expelled. You can't even imagine what happened next. My mom cried so much that I thought my dad would just kill me. But suddenly, he just said that I was a smart guy, but never put my skills to the right use. I needed to put my knowledge in another direction and then everything else would work itself out. I was really ashamed hmm. and started thinking. I analyzed the school group chat for a long time, asked everyone questions about online learning and how they felt about it and found out that everyone was bored and wanted to do teamwork and communicate with one another. Then I proposed to get together in small groups and do assignments together. For example, a group of exotic pet owners, a group of fans of Roman Emperor Tiberius, it was received with a bang and I put up a survey for everyone to take. Then I began to make a schedule so then I could attend various meetings and still manage to turn in assignments on time. It took me a few days to do this, but when it worked, it felt great. We went back to online school, but now we knew what kind of pets everyone had and what kind of bedrooms each one of us lived in. The girls also decided we should dress up in costumes for class and it would be very funny when pandas or wolves came to biology or when Cleopatra and Homer taught history. In a fun company, the classes seemed easier and distance learning was excellent. I not only managed to turn in all past homework, but also caught up with the rest of the school program. Today, my parents received a letter from school again, but this time they are happy to read it. 
It said how great I was and how much I helped making learning easier and more fun. Also, I finally found out how my scam surfaced. Do you want to know? It was my father. It turns out he came into the room when I was not there and saw the messages with Michael. He did not argue, but simply sent a screenshot to the teacher and asked her to carefully check all my work because it might look like somebody else's. Do you like distance learning? How do you submit your work? Write in the comments and subscribe to our channel. My name is Mark. I'm Steven's brother and Steven's a nurse. I was glad when the schools were quarantined and I rejoiced even more when the whole city was closed. The start of the quarantine coincided with the school holidays and nothing could distract me. It's a dream when you can stay home and play computer games. I didn't feel lonely. I simply began to communicate with friends more actively on social media. I have a lot of gamer friends, so we didn't get bored by getting together and staging raids. In addition, many services made their premium accounts free of charge for all the countries that were quarantined. All in all, I wasn't bored. I pulled out my anti-hemorrhoid pillow that I bought last year as if I knew I would need it. The fringe was full of food and all sorts of delicious stuff I'd bought on promotion before the quarantine. All right, I was fully prepared to sit through the entire quarantine. Once I got into my favorite gaming chair, I realized that I forgot to pay for my favorite game account and it would expire in a couple of days. I checked my electronic wallet and it was empty. Okay, I thought I have to refill it in cash via the terminal. The closest one was in the neighborhood area and there was already a restriction on movement without a route sheet and documents in the city, as well as checkpoints checking the documents. It's better to pay today before the control has been strengthened so I wore inconspicuous clothes, a medical mask, gloves. In other words, I did everything not to stand out from the crowd. When I walked out of the house, I headed towards my destination. I tried to avoid meeting the patrol because I didn't even have a route sheet. What would I write in it? It's a matter of life and death. I need to pay for my computer game account right now. Right? I was approaching the terminal by roundabout, and when I was just one block away, a patrol showed up ahead, which was moving towards me. I tried to act as natural as possible, but I knew the closer they got, the more nervous I felt. There was sweat on my forehead. If the patrol noticed that, they'd quarantine me in hospital immediately, and I would never see my favorite games. They were about to approach me as the last person on the patrol noticed something in the nearby bushes and they pulled a couple of, probably, lovers out of there who decided to spend time together before the quarantine, and they had no masks. While the patrol was dealing with them, I slipped by quickly. Finally, after paying for the account, I jubilantly ran home. The way back was smooth as butter. At last, I could relax, make myself comfortable, and play as much as I wanted. A week flew by imperceptibly. When I noticed the goodies in the fridge had run out, I realized something was wrong. Mom was walking around kind of sad and Dad was angry and kept calling somewhere. I decided to ask Dad what had happened, and he responded irritated, telling me not to interrupt, so I approached Mom. At first she didn't say anything, but when Dad wasn't home she probably couldn't take the pressure and cried. I brought her some water and she told me Dad had lost his job because the quarantine had cut back on the company's earnings. And besides, he hadn't even been paid for the last month. My brother spent 24 hours in the hospital. He told my mom everything was fine, but she knew what was going on there. There was a rumor that there were too many infected. But the saddest part is that my beloved grandmother seemed to have caught this coronavirus because she has all the symptoms, but since there was no room in the hospital, she was treated at home. And my mom wasn't allowed to see her because of the quarantine. I realized I was playing games too much and I didn't notice how things started to get worse around me. You can play so hard and discover that there is an apocalypse around you and people are surviving, struggling for food and toilet paper. That was enough. I didn't want to stand by idly in this situation. It was time for action. First, I installed a special program from NVIDIA that uses the power of your video card in a distributed neural network to calculate the cure for the infection. I have a powerful enough computer and I didn't want it to idle for nothing. Second, I got the money I saved to buy a second monitor and gave it to my mom. Mom burst into tears and said that this money would be useful to grandma, as that was the third thing I wanted to do. Visit grandma. I had the experience of passing the patrols, so I went out to the street, bought the necessary medicine at the nearest pharmacy, which were recommended in the treatment of coronavirus, and bought food from the supermarket. Then, with my backpack, feeling like a real spy or stalker, I went to my grandmother's. There were empty cars in the streets. 
Rare passers-by were wearing masks and immediately tended to move to the other side of the road. I finally got to my grandmother's apartment and knocked on the door, but nobody answered me. I had a set of keys to my grandmother's apartment, so I gently opened the door and stepped inside. There was silence in the apartment. Anticipating the worst, I entered the bedroom. Grandma was lying on her back. It seemed that she wasn't breathing. I started to think of all the ways to check if a person was alive, but suddenly... My grandmother sobbed loudly and turned over to the other side. Whew, it turned out she was just sleeping tight. Oh, I never felt so relieved. I woke her up and she told me that she had a very bad night with a fever that she had subdued just in the morning. I got there just in time. She had just run out of medication and the food came in handy. I got her favorite buns and bread. We sat down to talk and in the meantime, Grandma turned on the TV. There was a report interviewing a regular nurse. Although he was wearing a mask, I knew right away that it was my brother. He said that hospitals were overcrowded and couldn't accommodate everyone. So doctors needed the help of volunteers who were ready to look after lonely old people, particularly the sick. I realized that the next thing to do was to volunteer during the quarantine. Once I went to the commandant's office, I managed to get a volunteer pass. I was given a lecture on how to behave so as not to spread the infection. I was provided with antiseptic and other means of protection. So, I was no longer afraid to move around the streets, but on the contrary, I proudly displayed my pass to the oncoming patrols and they didn't hesitate to let me through, and some even thanked me. Dad found a new, high-paying remote job. Grandma got better and consulted her acquaintances who suspected they had symptoms of coronavirus on what to do and whether it was the coronavirus. Over time, the situation began to improve. We took control of the spread of the infection. I've learned that it's only by working together that we can control any infection. We need to not just sit back, but actively help others without violating the general quarantine rules. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Don't get sick and remember that only together will we be able to prevail. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel.